Hello. Let's continue with MD Book 2. We are beginning with um, what is pips, or what is pip and pipette. All those introductory topics were meant to build you up throughout your journey in Forex. You would continue to hear this world time and time again. Is the basic and bedrock of your analysis and profit calculation. Take your time with this information as it is required knowledge for all forex traders. And don't even think about trading until you are comfortable with pips, value, and calculating profit and loss. So the unit of measurement to express the change in value between two currencies is called a pip. In forest, a pip is the smallest amount by which a currency code can move. Yeah, so um, when you pick, for example, a code like Euro USD, and it moves from 1.2250 to 1.2251. That is one pips. There has been changes, yes, from 2250 to 2251. So a pip is the last decimal place of a quotation, given that Four decimal places are used for pairs without the Japanese yen. So if a pair does not or does include Japanese yen, then the currency code goes out to decimal place. So very important. There are brokers that put currency pairs beyond the standard four and two, four for the normal currencies, the majors, and sometimes um, two for all yen crosses pairs. So um, these coating are rational pips, also called pipette. That is a coat that comes with four to five or five decimal place. So for instance, if you see GBP USD moving from 51, 1.51542 to 1.51543, it has made one pipette. So pipette here stands for currencies or put with five decimal place, and we use PIP for currencies with four decimal place and two decimal place as well so in the calculation of pips we should start from the fourth decimal place though like always there are few exceptions i will start with the usual and also move to teach you guys the exceptions so let's assume the code of euro usd is written as one point one six eight nine and remember pips is the smallest unit by which a currency pair can move so to start calculating the pip you always start with the fourth decimal place since here the code is written 1.1689 and it has a four decimal place so the fourth decimal place in the above figure is nine so that is where the calculation will start from so when euro usd fluctuates and move from 1.1689 to 1.1690 it means it has made one pip move another example is taking usd card at value of one point three one six seven 
So if it also fluctuates and move from this static value 1.3167 to say 1.3168, it has also made one pip. Now, assuming it moved from this 1.3167 to 1.3169, it means it has made two pips. Note, for every move in pip, we are adding that value to the fourth decimal place. That is, for a move of one pip, we are adding 0 0.001 to the fourth decimal place to get the movement or how the value has moved. So you know one funny thing is that people sometimes think as a forest traders you cross your legs and money rain on us from above. You don't actually know how we go about analysis. This very large market, yes, a whole country's currency. And that is why when you see your alert, you spend it with confidence because worked for it so anything that anybody also shows you in this life that comes on a sliver platter of gold a platter of gold my brother and sisters run away because it's a scam and you know nothing good on this earth will come easy so when we are still on this u card and assuming with this static value 1.3167 and assuming this currency make a move of 10 pips from where it is the moment we are going to add this 10 pips to from the last seven figure that is taking the four decimal place so how are we going to obtain this value is by rather adding this 10 to the 67 to get 1.3177 so another example, if you can also make 20 pips move, we are still going to be adding this 20 to the same static value and we are going to obtain 0 0.6783. But if it makes 100 pips, means you are going to add it to the 167 there and we're going to give you so if you have um say 0 0.6783 and it makes 100 pip movement meaning we are going to be adding this 100 pips to the um, 6783 which will give us 0 0.6833 here yeah, one thing that you need to know is um don't intend to use calculator to do um, this or try to calculate pips yes and if you try that you are going to be getting wrong figures and i bet you with these calculations once um, you become familiar with um, what i'm teaching you um, i don't think you even spend time um, doing this we don't we don't even have time to do this but because this is educational class from basically from the scratch i want you to know how it is done yes yeah, so that um when you see it somewhere you will not fumble so now the one we have been doing for most currency pairs above the counting of pips starts from what we call fourth decimal place like i've explained above so however when you pick jpy pairs or japanese yen pairs and gold pairs it is different with some other minor few exceptions and these two are major traded pairs that have these exceptions to the rule hence we need to look at them closely so that you can also know how to go about them when it comes to their pips calculation so examples of jpy pairs are usd jpy euro jpy gbp jpy card jpy and aud jpy here remember in our first lectures we said the jpy here is currency whilst the USD and the other currencies written first are 
for the base currency. I believe you still remember those letters. Yes. So you start the counting of the pips for these JPY um, pairs from the second decimal place, not the fourth decimal place like we did above. So let's see how this one goes. So assuming you pick um UJ at one 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 dot two one, and if it makes one pip move, obviously it's going to give us one 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 point two two. So if it makes three pips. You add it to it, you get 111.24, and it goes on and on and on. But here, we are adding 0 0.1 if it make one pip, and 0 0.2, 0 0.02 if it make two pips. Just because the decimal place here is written as two, or it has two decimal place. Now, when you pick gold, and you know the MT4, gold is represented with um, SAU. USD. So you when you the symbol for gold is SAU and it's paired with silver. Um, silver is the no silver is there, and gold is paired with most of also the major currencies also on many um MT4 platform, and gold that Latin name was also derived uh, derived from Latin name of gold that was used on or in the periodic table. So if you see it written as that, no, it is still good that we are talking about here. And the pip count starts from first decimal place for good. Remember, it is first decimal place. JPY it starts from what the second decimal place. So when we have good at CMP at C one thousand two hundred and twenty four dot one seven. If it make one pip move, it will now have a value of what one thousand two hundred twenty four dot two seven. And notice I didn't say two eight just because here the pip count starts from the first decimal place, and so we are going to add that one pip move to the one and not the seven. And also, I didn't regard the second decimal place. Let me give another example. If it makes five pips from um, this same value, we will rather now have one point one two two four dot six seven. And here too, I added the five to the one and not the seven. So, what does buying and selling? really means in forex anyway forex is not like makola or marketing makola so um, let me really explain what we are doing in forex and how we make money from both sides so let's now open please follow the letters closely open your mt4 go to any currency pair and click on this image over here the logo or what do you call it the chat it is called the chat yeah so once you click on it you will see this um last looking sign like a folder a new folder something with this plus sign in there once you click on that it will take you to a place like this where you see this image on my left side so when you click there it will bring you to this place where you will see two icons that is the buy and sell yes now you see these two items and in forest you can either decide to buy or sell at any particular point you don't have to buy before you sell and i will explain this now so let's look at it when you look at this small image on my right side here, you can see we have um, USDJPY sell at 0 0.02, EXUSD, UUSD also so bought at 0 
have the same pair b both as 0 0.1 u share for also sold sold or sold at 0 0.02 we have gbp card also bought with 0 0.02 and gbp euro gbp also so what at 0 0.04 yes but now look at the trade in the screenshot above you see i bought gold and gbp card but i sold usd share ud and euro gbp but i never had to buy u chef ud or euro gbp before i sold them immediately i click on the sell button to open a sell order for me the same way that if you click on the buy button a buy order will also be open for you also i want assuming i want to buy immediately i click on the buy button to place a buy order for me but the big question is now when do i place a buy order and when would i please sell order notice after your analysis and you notice that a currency pair will rise you buy whilst in reverse when you notice a currency pair will fall you will sell rather so please a sell order when after your analysis you are able to tell that this currency pair or this asset is going to fall that means in forest you buy when the currency pair is rising and so when the currency pair is falling so let me give a practical example or something in rare financial market that explains this or give you an idea of how this forest market works so let's assume you knew Ghana city would rise two years from now and you bought ten thousand dollars wealth of that Ghana currency and kept it in a domiciliary account meaning an account that is a static or should i say dormant yes there's no fluctuations in there the value is still the same so you bought it at a rate of four cities 30 pesos or 30 uh, 34 cities 30 pesos and which is equivalent to four to three thousand cities that is that same ten thousand dollars worth of um, that currency that you bought so now two years down the line the city grows to 4.8 dollar that means this same ten thousand dollars you have in that account will now weld 48,000 cities now you didn't actually do any business with this money you leverage on the fact you knew that Ghana city would rise and you bought and kept the currency in a stronger base currency which in this case was us dollar this is what most people are constantly doing in the financial market now in forest you don't actually need to have ten thousand dollars or invest forty three thousand cities to make this amount of money you also don't have to wait for two years or one month for it to rise you are however taking advantage of small changes in pips to make your money immediately you click on buy button and the currency starts rising in that same minute you will start making your money and that same minute also assuming you knew a currency will fall 
and you click on the cell button and it's also start falling you're also going to make your money that same minute the profit is significant because your brokers offers you what we call leverage we will see the meaning of leverage later so i'll give you all an assignment as you are watching this video you pick up any currency pair of your choice and notice down those values yes of that quote on probably a piece of paper so you open that place you click buy or sell and click buy order and after that you also click the sell and place a sell order as well so when you wake up in the morning you check it back again and one will be in profit with blue color while the other will be in loss with red color yes since it's the same currency pair and at any particular point in time that currency may be trending up or trending down one result is going to be obtained but here i want you to pick that same currency of your choice say euro usd buy that same currency and sell that same currency so definitely one of them will be in blue because it will go in its favor whereas the other will also be in red because it didn't go in that particular direction yes so what is loss sizes loss size or concept of loss size a loss size in forex is amount of quantity of a particular currency pair that one can trade in this forex market now these currency pairs are not traded singly yes when you opened your mt4 you saw a whole lot of currency pairs and they are not there single or like one currency one currency but rather are paired with different currencies so they are treated as multiples of units more like they are treated in bundles or packs that is what makes those micro changes in value appreciable these bundles or packs of currencies are what is refers to as loss size so in forex there are three major types of loss size as it stands now as the time i'm recording this class others are also multiples of these so we have the standard lot the mini lot and the micro loss size in your mt4 this is where you can locate these values you can see this is an order form that has opened you can now click sell to sell buy to buy but you can see these places with the yellow ink or the red circle are where you increase or decrease your lot size and in the middle where we have the 0 0.01 is the current loss size so the place that the yellow color is pointing is where you change the loss size to the loss size of your choice then where the four red circles is where you increase or decrease the loss size to the loss size of your choice and the other way around On the other way around you just type in directly or it depends on the way that you want yes you can just clear the value over here and enter the value that you want so in the mt4 the standard law size is represent with figure 1.0 the mini law size is represented by figure 0 0.1 whilst micro loss size is also represented with 0 0.01 and remember i told you that loss size signifies the amount of a particular currency that you are trading on so let's begin with the first one standard loss size signifies 10,000 units of currency pairs or put currency could We have mini also signifies 10,000 units 
micro lot also signifies thousand units so that means when you click standard lot that is the 1.0 and enter a trade you are buying or selling 10,000 units of that particular currency pair also when you input 0 0.1 mini lot size and enter a second trade you are buying or selling 10,000 units of that particular currency pair and lastly when you use the micro lot which is the 0 0.01 and enter a trade you are buying or selling at that time thousand units of that particular currency pair so let me use an example to illustrate this let's see you are a trader that sells jeans in the market you all know that the traders won't just go to a main importer jeans and just buy a single piece you will definitely buy a jeans in bundles so you picture lot size as a bundles of jeans and you are buying a bundles of a currency pair so now let's assume we have a three traders a b c and trader a went to import went to the importer and bought hundred thousand bundles of jeans trader b also bought ten thousand and trader c bought thousand of these same jeans from the same importer and you agree with me that trader a will have will not have the same profit as b as well as c trader a will have higher profit while trader b also have more profit than trader c and this is because these traders bought three different quantities of same item and this is exactly the concept that occurs in forex someone that traded with 1.0 loss size will have more profit than someone that trade with 0.1 loss size this one to also enjoy more or have more profit the person or the a person who also um, trade with 0 0.01 loss size yes but here the usage of loss size have uh, been largely dependent on your equity size yes if you have more equity in your account you can place the standard lot and enjoy and get more monies but if you don't have it don't think you will be it will be prudent for you to go and use those loss size. Now, let's get to pip value in each of the loss size. When you use standard loss, one pip is equivalent to ten dollar. When you use the mini loss size, that is a zero point one. Pip is equivalent to one dollar if you're reading one dollar, and when you use the micro lot, one pip is also equivalent to zero point one cents. Now remember, for those three traders who went to buy these jeans in different quantities from the same importer, amount of bundles. They will be able to afford will depend on the amount of capital yes that is their business capital so the trader that bought hundred thousand bundles of jeans entered the business with much larger capital than the trader that bought thousand bundles of jeans so if three forest traders enter a trade position at the same time and they all made say 10 pips even though they all made 10 pips their profit will be dependent on the loss size they traded so let's say trader a traded with standard loss size b traded with the mini loss size and c traded with the micro loss size so they all made a profit of 10 pips but since 
A PIP for a standard loss of 100,000 units is $10. Trader A will make $100. Trader B will be making $10 out of that same period. And Trader C will make $1. And each of them use the loss size that their account can accommodate. That is the capital on their account. Now, concept of bid and ask price. Now, when you look at the image over here, you can see the various currency codes with some prices against it. You may now have been wondering why there are usually two set of prices besides all currency pairs. All forest codes are coded with two prices, the bid and ask. For the most part, the bid is lower than the ask. The bid is the price at which your broker is willing to buy the base currency in exchange for the good currency. This means the bid is the best available price at which you, the trader, will sell to the market. The ask price is the price at which your broker will sell the base currency in exchange for good currency. That means the ask price is the best price available at which you will buy from the market. Usually, the first set of price or the first set of goods is called the bid price while the second code is the ask price. First code is the bid, second is the ask price. And the bid price is the price that buyers are willing to buy, while ask price is the price that sellers are willing to sell. This may be looking complicated as usual, but let's see an example that explains this clearly. Let's assume a friend of yours from US send dollar to you, say thousand dollar. So um, you went to probably any bank or your bank. You exchange this in cities but when you got there they tell you that the exchange rate is four cities 50 pesos so meaning you will gladly collect this uh, 4500 cities as equivalent money to this thousand dollars and the next day probably something also pop up and you are also in need of this same dollar or thousand dollar for something urgent you went to this same bank of which you sold yours to at four cities 50 pesos and now they are telling you that you are to pay 5.0 that is 5000 cities for this same thousand dollars so here you meaning you have to pay this five thousand dollars so you could see that the four CD fifty pesos is the bid price, whilst the five point zero CDs is now the ask price. The bank is buying your dollar, and hence they are buying, and you are willing, and they are willing to buy it at four CD fifty pesos. Whilst in the second scenario, you were going to sell to them, and they are also only willing to sell at. 5.0 So that is where the above definition came from. 
to the bid price if the price buyers are willing to buy while the ask price is the price sellers are willing to sell the differences between the bid and ask price is popularly known as spread so for the example above the ask price 5.0 from the bid price 4.5 will give you 0.5 which is a spread and the spread is the profit for any financial institutions however it is now estimated in pips so for example if you have usd share at 0 0.9940 paired with 0 0.9942 the difference between these two figures is two pips and hence two pips is the profit for brokers so that is where they generate monies to pay off staffs maintain sites and all that when you pay this fee immediately you enter any trade and that is why if you've noticed all three that you entered on forest market begins with what minus or will be in red and gradually goes into profit or blue so you pay pip immediately you enter your trade and that is basically what space are so three things are linked together here bid spread and ask price so the bid is the first in the set of quotes the ask is the second price and the difference between the two will give you what spread the only thing is that you will recover any spread immediately your trade starts moving in your favor so when your trades are in red you are paying what you call the spread that is immediately you enter it and if things go as predicted or as as forecasted you will see it is turning into blue and once it's turned in blue your spread will be catered for and so you are not going to feel it anywhere but in fact in forest we don't even sometimes remember or think there is something we call spread exists so you are constantly making your profit from all your trees sometimes there are drawdowns too but i think the wins are more so the spread is at least a problem yes our main problem or our main focus is how to be able to tell at this particular time market is going to the upside or market is going to the downside also we have forms of trading others forms of trading others so in forest there are basically two major types of trading orders we have the instant market execution and pending orders so pending orders is further also classified into stop orders limit orders buy stop and sell stop buy and co so in big instant market execution instant market execution buying or selling at a particular currency at the current market price which is the cmp so let's say you log into your mt4 and see that aud usd is at 0 0.7352 so immediately you click on either buy or sell the broker will open up a trade position for you at that instant price so you can see here the opposite is pending orders in which you are entering at a future price meaning price is not at that value yet or price has not gotten to that point yet and so your order will only be activated when price reach those values or that price that you've set yourself however you have an interest of entering a price to go that level yes so normally when you get to the place where you normally place your buy or sell order you see by default it is instant market execution as settled in red on this image on my left side however when you see the other form of market or if you want to see the other form of market i'm just going to click on where i have the yellow arrow indicating or pointing and there is a drop down there which will bring to you the other uh, market 
others. So you can see we have instant here reducing by limit cell limit by stop cell stop by stop limit and by and cell stop limit. So when you click on it, the other forms of market will appear. Like I said, instant market execution, you are entering at the instant market price or instantaneous price. So for example, on the screenshot above, when you are entering a trade on Euro GBP, you can see this is a form for that for Euro GBP. Yes, yeah, so um, I will enter at price of 0 0.8960 so that that is the instant market or what the instant market execution means. So I'll talk about the other forms of orders when we start the next outline or we begin to do the analysis phase. That is where we will be discussing um, support and resistance and so also the rest are advanced forms of trading or advanced forms of trading facing others and you need to understand some basic things before we can do that so see they are what we call the turning point so normally i leave pending orders till we get there but however for this basic class just know that pending orders uh, market orders that you place with an intention of entering or price activating at a future date or future price okay what is concept of take profit and stop loss the stop loss and take profit are form are two forms of important elements of trade management and it's just an important as analysis one will do before opening a position or entering a trade as a trader you will not always be online monitoring all your trades it is not as if we forest traders just get a seat and stay in front of our laptop all this no so some of your trees may stay overnight. Yes, sometimes you may leave your trees there overnight. Some may last for days or probably weeks. That is if you want or the type of trader that you become. Yes. But you may also have an important duties or important um, games or other things to also look like. So um, people have many whereabouts as an individual. And that is market orders come to play. Yes. So um, you have this take profit here. And it's an order that tell your broker or send a signal or information to your broker for them to close your position or your trade for you when it reaches a specified price level in profit. So stop loss and take Profit levels are static in nature. In other words, the orders are triggered and your trees are closed when a security or an asset or a pair that you are trading reach those levels that you have set yourself when entering your trade. So the take profit. It's a form of market orders that tell your broker to close your trade for you and lock in your profit when your trade move in certain number of steps in your desired direction, even if you are not online. So remember, for us, we are always doing two things, buying and selling. So let's take a buying scenario. Let's say you enter the trade on a -A -A -B 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 currency pair and it's currently at $40 and from your technical or fundamental analysis you found out that it will soon rise for more than 50 pips and because you don't want to be greedy you peg your tick profit at 30 pips so what will you do what you do here is you add this target of 30 pips to the current price of 
which will give you a TP or a take profit of about 70 pips. So when it rises and or when these currency pairs start moving or climbing to the upside and reaches $70, even if you are not online, your broker will close the trade for you automatically using your MT4 and add this 30 pips or $30 profit to your account immediately. So that is how the TP works. Yes. So that means, or that does not mean you can't close your trade yourself. Yes. When price is in your favor to the point that you want, you can highlight it and close the order smoothly. But express with this method closing your trade is that you have to be online always. You have to be online always to monitor the trade. And secondly, most currency pairs take time to also move or to get to a certain point. And it won't be feasible for a trader just to stay in front of his or her computer for a long time monitoring a trade and so you just have to set your tp and leave it plain and that may take a couple of of your precious time and you see that is why take profit was developed to do this automatically without any stress so let's see where you key in your what do you call it your take profit and your stop loss so on this image here, you can see we have something we call SL circled in red arrow, red um, circled here. We have TP also here. TP is take profit and SL means stop loss. So on the image above, the area circled in red is where you will input your stop loss value while the area circled on the other hand with blue ink is where you also key in or input your um, take profit so let's now start with um, some basic calculations so i'll start with say an arbitrary number first then we go further into rare example so from that chart above we assume gbp is at 30 dollar remember i said these are arbitrary values not rare figures and so you want also you want to also enjoy say 40 pips of that trade so let's assume here pips is in dollars so since you want 40 pips as profits you set your tp at 70 how did we get this we added the 40 to the initial value of 30 and we got 70. so if that trade or gbp usd rises from 30 to 70, the trade will automatically close itself, even if you are not online. That is, if you actually set it at 70. On the other hand, stop loss, on the other hand, is the opposite of take profit. And it's a form of market order that instructs the broker to close your trade when the market is about to go against you it does it automatically even if you are not online so let's assume you enter a trade at a price of 30 dollars and you don't want to lose more than 10 dollars in this trade that means your stop loss is 10 pips to know the value you input at your mt4 you subtract this 10 pips from the current value which is 30 dollars so we now have 20. So when so the value of your stop loss is what $20. And remember, in buying, we want price to rise. Take note that all these examples are for buying. We will see selling later. So in buying, you want price to rise. So if the price of this pair didn't rise again and start falling your brokers 
full close your feed for you when it reaches the price that you inserted or the price that you have keyed into the stop loss area. And remember, we had twenty dollar as our per the calculations, and we are going to input this um, twenty dollar in the area that was also settled in red on that particular image above. So when the price starts to fall from 30 and 4 to 20 instead of rising, the trade will automatically close. That means you when only went a negative of a ten dollar, your account is still safe because even if it falls to five dollar, you don't care. When you it goes to twenty, you'll be taken out and it continues to go to its direction. So you are out of that trade. So for the example I gave above, currency pair with thirty dollar as the current price, our TP was seventy, and our stop loss was what twenty. That is using forty pips as peak profit point and ten pip as our stop loss. So now let's get to a selling scenario. Okay, so um, let's use this example to explain what I did above. So let's say you want to buy um, U share, and the as price is zero point nine nine four nine, and we want it to rise fifty pips as TP and ten pips at stop loss. Our calculation will be as follows. Starting with the TP, since the price there is 0 0.9949 plus the 50 pips, we are going to get 0 0.9999 as our TP. So we will just go to the place or the area that was circled in blue and type 0 0.999 in there because we are targeting 50 pips. So once the trade rise from 0 0.9949 to 0 0.9999, it will close immediately for you so assuming um you use um c 0 0.1 plus size the 50 dollar will be added to your account we know that when using 0 0.1 loss size as our loss size 50 pip is equivalent to 50 pip because 0 0.1 is equivalent to a dollar per pip so let's now get to stop loss. Since we are saying that we don't want to lose more than 10 pips in this trade, our stop loss will be 0 0.9949 0 .9 minus 10 pips. By doing that, we would have 0 0.9939. Hence, our stop will be at 0 0.9939. And that is the value you are going to also key in the area and circle it with red ink above. So when the currency um, fall instead of rising and goes to 0 0.9939, your brokers will also close the trade automatically and you will lose only $10 because you used 10 pips as your stop loss and it is also based on the loss size that you use so let's see a selling scenario so let's follow closely once again let's take an imaginary currency let's say usdttt whose value is currently at hundred dollar we want to place a sell order on this currency pair and i want a tp of 60 pips and a stop loss of 10 pips so now this time we are selling and remember I told you guys that when selling you want the currency pair to go down or the currency pair to fall. So we want it to start falling from $100 downwards. And that is when we will make our money. So since we want TP of 60 pips, our TP will now be 100 minus 60 which is equal to 40 so if you notice i didn't add this time around because i told you i want or i don't wish for it to go up 
I want it to go down because I'm selling. And that is why I subtracted to get my TP. I did the opposite of what we did when we were buying. So here, our TP should be set at 40. That is what I will input at the area that was circled in blue of my TP session. So if this currency starts falling from 100 and reaches 40, my broker will automatically close the trade and add 60 pip profit to my account. For the stop loss, in this case of selling, it is the opposite of what we did for buying. So I don't want to lose more than 10 pips in this selling trade. And remember, it is the current price at now is $100. So what we will do here or this time around is to add this 10 pips to the $100 current market price. This is because I'm going to sell and I don't expect it to rise. So hence the stop loss will be 1110. We will then key in this 1110 into what we call it my um, stop loss area. And if this currency fails to fall like we wanted, it to and start rising from hundred dollar immediately it rises and reaches one one ten dollar the broker will also close the trade and protect your account for you so here you also be losing that ten dollar gain because it didn't go the sell position but rather tends to the buying position so if you notice this is just a clear what do you call it opposite of what we did for uh, buying opportunity so for buying you are adding to get your tp and subtracting to get your stop loss but when you pick a selling we are what subtracting to get our tp and adding to get our stop loss simple as that so now let's look at a rare example of a sell scenario on this image here, we have um, AUD New Zealand, that is Australian dollar versus the New Zealand dollar, with the current market price of 1.0887. 1.0887. Take note, I use the bid price here and not the ask price. So don't forget that selling. You are making reference to what we call the bid price, the first quote. And assuming I want 30 pips from um, the above trade, then I, then I want only a stop loss of say 5 pips. To get your TP, you will subtract the 30 from this bid price value. And now we will obtain 1.08. Five, seven. This result is what we will be entering or we will enter at um, the take profit area because we want it to fall. When price fall and reaches 0 0 1.0857, your broker will close and add 30 pips profit or equivalent value to it and it is also based on your loss size yes so for your stop loss we will add five pips to the bid price that same bid price value of 1.0887 where you will get 1.0892 and that is what is going to be our stop loss value because we are anticipating for a sell trade and a sell trade we expect the currency flow to go down and so if things turn around and it start going up that is when we are going to lose money and so our stop loss will be set up there so that if it starts going up we will not lose much money the last topic that we are going to discuss here is leverage and leverage is a concept in this forex market that enables traders to participate in this large market effectively and this is also given to traders by the, their brokers and 
Sometimes when you are creating or when you were creating the Domo account, you saw it 1.11100, 1 1.200, 1 1.400, and thereabouts. Yes. And I remember when we also did lost sites, I told you guys that um you are buying these currencies in bulk. Yes. I said that standard loss is equivalent to hundred thousand units, mini loss is ten thousand units, and the micro will also give you thousand units of that particular currency there. But now to buy in these huge or large quantities will also require large amounts of capital. And imagine using ten thousand dollars to buy one currency there. It will only be what we call the big banks and the wealthy individuals that will be able to participate in some of these things or some these forest things that we are doing. Now, however, the emergence of retail brokers give everyone the chance, no matter the class of your annual income, to also participate in this large market just because of the leverage that they provide. So these brokers all over the world made this possible offering traders what we call the leverage and the um, leverage over here is a concept that gives traders a helping hand by multiplying their capitals by a certain amount so that they can actually trade with that little amount of equity in their forest account yes so for example when your account leverage is set to say zero point um, 100 is to 1, you can buy, say, $100 by paying $1. Therefore, to buy $100,000, that is one lot, you are going to pay only $1,000. And this was an example to explain what leverage means. For example, a forest broker may offer 50 to 1 leverage which means that $50 margin deposit will enable a trader to buy or sell 2,500 worlds of currency. Yeah, so similarly, with um, $500, one could also trade with $25,000 worth of currency. And whilst with this all ready, let's remember that leverage is a double-edged a double sword. Without proper risk management, high degree of leveraging can lead to large losses as well as gains. Yes. And sometimes people say, oh, forest trading, you can make millions a day. Yeah, true, you can make millions a day. And this is because of leverage and loss size. Yes. When you over leverage your account and you also place bigger losses, loss sizes. Unfortunately for you, if things go in your favor just one day, you, you can just make millions just like that. But if care is not taken and things also turns around, meaning since you have over leverage and also using a bigger loss size, it means you are also going to lose in that regard. So um, I would like to end here for today. Um, and this is, uh, what do you call it, the MD book 2. I will continue with the book 3 and probably process and send it to you guys also thank you very much go through and pardon me for being late and also if you have um, what you call it any questions you, you just um, draw my attention for any clarifications